as tens of thousands of Ontarians book their booster shots amidst a new variant of concern. Millions of others around the world haven't even received their first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. But before Omicron was even discovered, an academic physician here in Toronto declined a booster shot all in the name of vaccine equity. My concern has been for the growing inequity in the delivery and uptake of COVID vaccines globally. Last month, Dr. Ross Upshear tweeted that he would decline his booster shot until Canada fulfills its pledge to COVAX, as millions of health professionals and at-risk populations around the world remain unvaccinated. With Omicron here, his stance on the booster shot has changed, but the criticism still stands, says the academic physician, who chairs and sits on a number of boards, including with the World Health Organization. Someone at a conference yesterday mentioned that more people in high-income countries have received uh, boosters than people in sub-Saharan Africa have received first doses. I don't think it takes a genius to figure out that there's something wrong with that scenario. The global dashboard for vaccine equity shows the difference. One in two people vaccinated versus one in 12. That gap between high income represented by the purple line and low income countries, the red line at the bottom. People can say, oh, yeah, but you know what they say on a plane if, uh, you know, we've got to put the oxygen mask on first. Well, we've we've had the oxygen mask on for a while in Canada, <laughs> you know, for us. So, so it's not like we are completely unprotected. We're one of the highest vaccinated countries in the world. We have excellent uh, health uh, uh, infrastructure. Canada has pledged to donate at least 200 million doses of vaccines. We asked two experts to give the government's efforts a grade. The pledge is probably, you know, a good solid A. The delivery is probably about a D. Clearly, the wealthy countries in the world have not, don't have a passing mark in vaccine equity. So far, the Canadian government says it has delivered 8.3 million doses through COVAX and 762,000 doses of AstraZeneca through another stream. In uh, the poorest countries of the world, vaccine, people who are vaccinated, it's about 6% of the population. Here in Canada, we're over 80%. If we don't help the lower income, the people in lower income countries, not only does it mean that more people there are going to die from the coronavirus, it also means that globally, the pandemic isn't going to end. Canadians have stepped up in a big way. More than 40,000 have so far donated over $9.6 million to UNICEF's Get a Vax, Give a Vax campaign, helping to vaccinate nearly 4 million people in low-income countries. The global campaign has so far distributed 1 billion vaccines around the world. They initially had a goal of 2 billion by the end of the year. We still want to reach 2 billion in the first about four months of, of next year. And that will mean that in 92 lower income countries, they, we will have been able to vaccinate 20% of the population. Dr. Russ Upshur says that vaccines are just one element of this global response to the pandemic. There are also other efforts that need to be well coordinated and resourced on a global scale. There is much more to the story for that. You can go to our website, citynews.ca in Toronto. I'm Faisa Amin for City News.